Hello and welcome back today. Today we're going to take a very quick look at tone hole design on a Buffet R13. And if you are interested, we'll take a further look at all the tone holes, at least the primary ones. What I did here basically is I took some Play-Doh and I pushed it down into the tone hole. And I'll let it, I pushed in there, use some tools here to make sure I pushed it down and around so we got the shape of the tone hole. So this was pushed in there like that and then it dried overnight. And briefly what we ended up with is I'll jump over to this picture here is remember now the tone hole. Let me show you how I measure the tone hole. First of all, you need some good calipers. And it's and the tone hole is not cylindrical. It's more hourglass shaped. So we basically measure it close to the top, just inside the lip of the top chimney. And you can measure that in there like 9.52. Then you can push it in all the way because then that'll get the minimum amount there, which is 9.32, 9.33, using these part of the uh, caliper there. But the inside is a bit more difficult. Um, I'm going to have to rebuild a tool I used before to do that. But this clay gives us a good idea of what it looks like. What we have here in the diagram is, now keep in mind, the tone hole is cut into a cylinder of the bore. So depending upon where you measure it, it may be bigger or smaller. I measure it right down in the middle. To do that, I simply used this part of the measuring thing. And I put it down on the top of the tone hole. And I pulled it up as I looked through it until it wasn't visible anymore. And that gave me a measure of 10.06 in that case. Yeah, about 10.06. So we got to make sure it's straight down. But using this and extrapolating the sides of left to right, I figured the bottom of the tone hole was 10.35 millimeters, which of course is dependent upon where you measured on the bore. But we have to be careful about, remember how it is the shape of the tone hole and the shape of the bore. We're going to take a look at that real quickly now. What I used was a bore scope. And the borescope used the mirror. And I used a 45 degree mirror. This goes on the end of the borescope. It's basically a small uh, camera and hits this mirror, 45 degree mirror. So we're able to see things at 45 degrees. I tried other angles, but it didn't quite work so well. So we're going to take a look down now first down the bore of the clarinet and look up from the tone hole. Then we're going to take a look down into the tone hole. Okay, we're going. Okay, we're going into the bore of the tone hole from the top. And we can see the cutout here on the sides of the tone hole. It's more distinct on the sides of the tone hole, as you can see there. And it gets into the tone hole itself. You can see the wood's kind of dried out, and we'll be talking about um, oiling the bore and the tone holes in a little bit here. But that's from the inside of the tone hole. You can see a distinct ledge there from cutting on the outer edges of the bore. Now we're going to go from the tone down into the tone hole with a 45 degree mirror. Now looking down into the tone hole, hopefully you get some focus here. Yes, I have to clean my rings. I haven't cleaned this clarinet in a long time. But you can see the edge there, of the tone hole getting into the bore itself. Can't really see the curvature of the tone hole in this diagram, you could actually, right here, this amount right here is goes from a big opening 
And this is the minimum part of the tone hole right here before it curves back out. If you take a good look at it, if you can, try that again. That gunk there is the Play-Doh. This is why you need to oil your bore every so often so it doesn't get so dry like this. And that's about it. Oh, going back in one last time. Let's stop this. Move forward a little bit. <clears throat> here you can see the cut right here. This is the overcut right here going into the outside of the tone hole. And this is the middle of the tone hole. So this is its smallest diameter right here before it starts going out again, ever so briefly, before we get into the bore itself. Hopefully you can see that. You can see the, this is the sides of the bore itself, opposite the tone hole, either side left and right, not in the middle. The middle is much more shallow. Well, that's all we have for today. Just looking at one quick tone hole. That will be the middle D or lower G, below the cleft G or middle of the cleft D. If you'd like to see more tone holes in the design of each tone hole, leave a comment below and we'll work on that. Always have a nice day. We'll see you later. <laughs>